Hello, welcome to a new demo on modification of switch discovery IP, which is a new feature that has been added into the Nexus dashboard fabric controller. This is Karishma Gupta, technical marketing engineer, Cisco. In NDFC, when we discover switches, we use their IP addresses and the IP address can be either a management interface, which is referred to as an out of band interface for easy fabrics, or it can be an in-band interface IP, which is basically the connectivity over a front panel interface. This is supported for brownfield, external and classic LAN fabrics. In the DCNM world, once a device was added to a fabric, its discovery IP could not be updated, which means that we need to first delete the switch and then re-add the switch back. In NDFC 12.x, we now provide the capability to update the device discovery IP even when the device is already imported. This is supported for LAN fabric and LAN based monitor modes only. The updated IP must belong to only management interface and it's supported only for NXOS switches. The fabrics that we support for this feature are Easy Fabric, Easy Fabric EBGP, External and LAN Classic Fabrics. And in the Fabric Discovery mode, we support it also for the LAN Monitor Fabric. Fabrics can either be in Managed mode or Monitored mode. The IP address updated on the device must not be in use and only the administrators with a network admin privilege can make this change. What are the use cases? Why did we add this feature in NDFC? A customer may want to relocate the device post fabric import to a new data center which has its own management pool or they want to repurpose the device for a different topology or use case which requires an updated management zero IP address. What are the prerequisites? We recommend verification of the current switch status, the IP address and the fabric that you'd want to make changes on. In this example, we're going to look at uh, the leaf switch and we're going to change the IP address from 192.168.100.82 to 100.90. Log into the switch directly via the console port and first make this change on the IP address. When we do that, thereafter, in a couple seconds, we're going to see that the switch itself becomes unreachable on NDFC, of course, because the IP address has already changed. We select the switch and now we're going to go into actions and we're going to discovery and we are going to change the discovery IP itself. Once we have done that, we are going to update the new IP address. So again, we're changing it from 100.82 to 100.90 and we're going to put that into the system. Once we've done that, the switch will go back into the normal operation mode. What if the fabric is in manage mode? The switch will now go into migration mode. As we see, the mode is now migration. And this means that the NDFC configuration intent has to be updated. How will we do that? We're going to perform a recalculate config by going into the fabric action menu, and we're going to do an intent update. When we do that, what, what is NDFC doing? It's basically collecting the running configuration from the switch it's going to update the intent of management zero interface and the management VRF. The switch will now go into the normal mode from the migration mode in the next, next discovery cycle. And we'll now start using this new IP address in NDFC. The management zero interface will also show the updated IP address. We can also run this operation by going into the topology view, by going into discovery and change discovery IP. Some special scenarios to keep in mind. If we do a system backup and restore, if the switch discovery IP was updated and NDFC restore is done to a state before the change, then the discovery IP change procedure has to be performed again. The alarms associated with the original switch IP will be purged. So that's the system backup and restore. In case of fabric backup and restores, likewise, if the discovery IP was updated and the NDFC fabric is restored to a state before that change, then the switch will be out of sync after the restore and some of the intent needs to be edited manually. For example, the management zero interface config and the management VRF. So these were some of the steps and things to keep in mind when we are modifying the discovery switch IP in NDFC. That was it for this demo. Thank you for watching.